Hello everybody, this is Chris. I wrote the music for Risk of Rain and I'm going to do a little track by track commentary for you guys. The idea is I'm going to have the soundtrack playing in the background and I'm just gonna talk over it, discuss, you know, the atmosphere, how it came about with it, the instrumentation, maybe the main themes and uh, the harmony and all that stuff and maybe a little bit about the tools that I used and, you know, just uh, whatever uh, trivia that might come up about uh, each track. So, let's begin. So this is the first track, it's called Risk of Rain, and um, as you can imagine, I didn't have to think too hard about the title. It's the first thing I wrote. What's interesting about it is that you can basically trace back to this track most of the material that is spread throughout the entire soundtrack. So, you know, like the main theme is here, chord progressions that are reused over and over, they're here. A lot of the, the, the most basic instrumentation is here. So this was, for me, sort of uh, really like the foundation of the entire soundtrack. You know, it really made like a template of sorts of how the soundtrack would be laid out in uh, the coming tracks. Um, this was written uh, f before the Kickstarter and uh, the feedback that I had was, you know, that we would ne also need something more action-packed because the game, you know, is action-packed. It's about shooting, it's about, you know, surviving in a hostile planet, so we need something more intense. We ended up using this um, in the menus. As you can see here is a really ambient track, slow paced and just uh, for me it just sets this atmosphere. The inspiration behind it was basically not so much the gameplay of the game but the colors of it. Because if you look at the game, the color palette, all those purples, the, a lot of pastel colors, that's how it came about with the sound, you know, it really felt like this is a dark game we need to portray. Besides the all fun and game stuff, you know, um, we, we should really portray the, the alienation, you know, the being stranded in a hostile planet and all that. So that's how this sort of, um, you know, dark sound um, came up and I, I tried to maintain it throughout the entire soundtrack. So this is the second track, it's called Dewpoint, and it's actually the second thing that I wrote for the game. Of course, as you can hear, it's a bit more fast-paced. What I really thought uh, about the soundtrack is that I would really want to explore a little bit more of my musical background when I was a bit younger, because I studied uh, classical music for quite a long time. But, uh, you know, when I was younger, I was uh, playing in rock bands, like I was playing keyboards, drums and stuff like that. So I really wanted to, to have this kind of um, rock feeling and prog, prog rock feeling. So this is a, a song that is really inspired by the prog sound of the 70s. You know, you can imagine the psychedelic prog sound, maybe like Osric Tentacles, stuff like that. And for any musical geeks out there, and I mean that very lovingly, as I am myself one, uh, you can probably count that this is on a 5-4 time signature instead of like the common 4-4 four, four, one. We can hear also the, the first uh, real touch of uh, chiptune sounds in this song. There are chiptune sounds in the previous one, in Risk of Rain, but they were added after, quite quite later, you know, it was not in the first version, there was no chip tunes. And the first solo of the, of the soundtrack. What I really loved about the soundtrack is that I got to play a lot of stuff, I got to perform a lot of stuff, I got to pick up my, my guitar, sit on my keyboard, uh, play my bass, and I really love that. 
that's a rare thing to do. You know, when working on film music and game music, there's a lot of programming involved, a lot of MIDI editing. If you're working on a tracker, it's even, you know, you don't even see notes, you just see, you know, letters and hex code or whatever. So it was extremely fun for me to sit down and play things. All of the solos, all the electric basses, uh, a lot of the keyboards, you know, they're really actual live performances that have um, very minimal uh, post-editing. And that's extremely fun. It was extremely fun to do. I was really lucky to get to do that. But yeah, I was talking also about the chip tunes. Um, of course, as you can imagine, uh, looking at a game like Risk of Rain, which is like a pixel art game, uh, chip tunes is obviously the first thing that will come to mind about building its uh, sound. But the guys, Hopu, contacted me because they had listened to another soundtrack I, d I, I created before that for a game called Droidscape Basilica. And that soundtrack was really like a dark electronic sort of thing that had nothing to do with chip tunes also. That was my clue that, you know, we're not looking for a chip tune artist. We're not looking for that particular sound. We're more interested in what you will come up with. Although I did end up uh, using a lot of chiptune sounds and samples, it's not the foundation of the soundtrack, it's just a coloring thing on top of it. So, this is Tropic of Capricorn. This uh, track ended up uh, becoming a little bit of a drum and bass, a little bit of a break beat. You can listen to the main theme of the album. These four notes, bum, 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 bum. this thing is used throughout the entire thing extensively and in different variations. Sometimes it's, uh, it's reversed, mirrored. That's basically really how I tend to work with music, especially for albums that are, uh, you know, concept albums. Like a, a soundtrack of a game, it should have a, a, the sort of unity, as far as I'm concerned. So I like to pick just a few themes and use them over and over again in, in different variations. And that really, for me, creates this, this unity. It makes it, you know, one thing instead of just separate tracks that are playing in the background. What's interesting about this strike that it basically shows that I just couldn't resist myself because you have this break beady thing and it just segues into a rock solo, which comes basically out of nowhere. It's not really a solo, it's just a repetition of the main melody, but still, you know, it's a, it's a rock part and a rock transposition here. I just, I just couldn't help it, you know, I was having so much fun playing with these tracks that I just wanted to add something like that. And if you listen to that little effect just now, that's one of the things that I used throughout the soundtrack very extensively. A lot of the tracks have it, even as a, uh, as a sh sound shaping effect, sometimes it's not very obvious, but it's called a bit crusher. And if you're not familiar with it, it's basically an effect that uh, takes a sound and reduces its resolution, its fidelity. It makes it uh, sound as if it's coming from an old uh, coin op or, you know, NES or whatever lo-fi source. You can tweak it to your likings, of course. And here's Monsoon. I don't know if anybody has up with this but it's called monsoon because 
of those uh, tablas that are playing. Uh, I thought it the titles of the soundtrack, they all have to do with uh, rain or water. So I thought, hey, I'm using the tabla, I'm using a little bit of sitar at some point. It's really in the background, it's not really noticeable, it's just a color thing. But still, let's call this monsoon. It's funny that the, the hardest difficulty in the game is also called monsoon. That's something that we hadn't, hadn't really planned, but it's a, it's a nice coincidence. And here's what I call the theremin part. Monsoon was the third track that I wrote for the um, for the Kickstarter, and it's safe to say that it's the most loved track from the soundtrack. A lot of people really just dig this. And here's the main theme again, and it's reversal. that scratchy thing that you just listened to, it's, uh, it's coming from Omnisphere, Spectrasonic's Omnisphere. If you're a musician writing you know, electronic music or, or writing in a computer, you've probably heard of it. It's uh, one of the most commonly used synthesizers out there. It's an all-around hybrid of um, you know, synth that is, you, can, you can use it to create your own sounds based on you know, the, the common waveform, sine waves, square waves, etc. But it also has an extensive library of samples and patches that you can use. And it's used really heavily throughout the soundtrack. There are many, many patches of Omnisphere. The thing is, I'm rarely using a default patch, you know, out of the box. I'm, I'm usually taking... Um, the patch and I'm manipulating in a way that I, I shape it into my own, you know, style and need. And that's something that I really recommend uh, to anyone working with music. Just don't use the presets, you know, just uh, do a little bit of tweaking. It's part of the creative process also. It's not, it's, uh, music is not just about, you know, part of the instrumentation, the color that you pick is a really uh, important choice. And this is Cyclogenesis. It's, uh, it was written before the Kickstarter. It was written almost together with Dewpoint. I was sort of writing them in parallel. But we didn't end up using it in the Kickstarter because it actually got rejected from Hopu. They felt it's a little bit too ambiguous, I guess. Too much of a dark maybe non-specific sound or atmosphere. I guess it's uh, because of those augmented chords that are just too open, you know, they don't lead anywhere. But, uh, interestingly enough, after a while I got an email from the guys and said, you know, the, the, the tracks had been sitting on in our shared folder in our Dropbox for a while, and I got an email from them saying, you know what, we just grown into the track we want to use it let's let's do it uh, let's make a proper track out of it and here's where the payback is for those open chords you know you get into this really structured harmony wise progression with the solo on top of it which of course it's because I just couldn't help myself I wanted to play the solo really one of the rare times that in the soundtrack you get a proper harmonic cadence. If, if it's that sounds confusing to you, if you're not familiar with the term, it's just like when in music you have a complete sentence in your harmony and melody. So, it, you know, it has like a beginning, a middle part and an end. And this is one of the rare occasions in the soundtrack that you get this sort of uh, resolution in this solo. 
I also want to point out that all of the solos, well not all of them, but most of the solos in the soundtrack, they're not guitars. They are, a lot of people think, you know, or comment you know, on YouTube and stuff, they say, I love this guitar solo, I like this guitar solo. There's hardly any guitar solo, guys. Most of the things are a patch, a lead patch that I created in Omnisphere using a sine wave and passing it through, you know, many amps and effects and delays. And that's how it's created. So it's a keyboard solo, basically. And we've, uh, we're listening to 25.3 North, 91.7 East. As you can imagine, these coordinates are nothing but random. Or if you couldn't imagine it, well, now you know that they're not. There have been some people that uh, figured it out, why it's named like that. I'm not gonna say. It's not a big deal to find out, but it's, I still like it when people send me a comment to say, you know, I get it. I know what you did there. And here is actually a, a part that a real guitar plays. Again, the melody, the main theme of the of the game. Those four notes. Might be interesting for you guys to know that this little thingy that does this wee 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 on the background is actually a guitar coming through guitar rig and, an, and a pitch shifter effect that is automated to do this uh, kind of bend all the time. And it's just, you know, one playing one note and changing based on the harmony, but it's just one single note that just does the bending on its own. Another detail about this track is that it's written in 11-8. That's a quite complex uh, time signature. It's made out of uh, two different, uh, basically, time signatures, a five and a six. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And, and the five, of course, is also a complex time signature, so it's made like, uh, out of two and a three, but that's, you know, I'm getting into way too geeky stuff now, right now, I should shut up. The original version of this track was uh, just the background thing, actually, and then I thought, okay, there's something missing, and I thought, wow, I haven't put any melody, I just have, like, some uh, chord progressions going on. So, yeah, I added the main theme to it, at some point. I did have the idea, because of that, to release this track uh, without the solo, without the melody on top and have people jam to it and send it to me and see what they can come up with. Another thing about this track is, I, I think I would call it the, 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 the most happy sounding one of the lot. It's really, it's not really a dark track, you know, it's kind of a, it has a, a more um, cheerful sound to it. So I'm gonna shut up for just a little bit because I don't know what else to say about this thing. I have a sip of coffee and get back to you. Listen to the clap track here. It's a nice patch I found from Cinematic Instruments. Uh, I've used this quite a bit. I also use it on Hailstorm that's coming up next. If you really you know notice, you can might hear it in the background. It's a nice thing because it has very natural sounding claps that you can basically program and they, they play on their own. You, you know, you create patterns as a drum, like in a drum machine. And it's really nice and easy to work with. So Hailstorm. This one, it was really an experiment. 
What you're listening to right now is all generated by the drum track. Everything at, at the moment, there's nothing that doesn't come out of the drum track. Even those organ-like sounds and the distorted, bassy guitars. They're coming from the bass drums and the snares and the cymbals. And what I did is because at the moment I was really, I don't know, I was halfway through, I was kind of sort of getting a little bit tired. And when I started writing this, I didn't have too much inspiration, you might say. So I thought, okay, let, let's, let's do a little experiment to boost up creativity. And now it's not just drums anymore, it's other stuff, but you know, like the, the core of the track and the thing you were listening to before. That was just drums, and this is how I did it. I put, I laid down the drum track, and then I used the vocoder on it. So I used a different vocoder on the on the bass on the kick drum, and a different one on the snares, and a different one on the cymbals. And um, I don't know if you know how vocoder works, but basically it gets a sound and it transforms it into another sound based on the uh, on, on the notes that you input into the vocoder. So, you know, you input some chords or, some, or a melody. It's commonly used on, on voices, but it's also sometimes it's used on... You can be used on anything, if anything you want, if you're feeling, you know, crazy enough. But uh, drums is not uncommon to be, to be used on drums. So I thought, okay, let's do that, you know. Let's uh, have the... Let's build a track like that. And so that's how uh, Hailstorm came about, just uh, laying some drum beats and then building on that. And Moisture Deficit. This track was the first time that I used a real guitar on the album. Again, the main theme. I was really hesitant about sending this track to Hopu because I thought, what is this? Is like a like a kind of Western, Western vibey thingy with this uh, James Bond type of, type of guitars creating the, the harmony. But they loved it. And that gave me, I was really, you know, opening the door to all sorts of guitar stuff throughout the album. In Hailstorm before, there's one of the extremist guitar parts. It's, it's really on the background. It's not like a solo or something, but I've just had, my, had, had the guitar in my hands and basically just abusing it, hitting it. And I passed that through all sort of uh, choppers and bit crushers and auto pans and distortions, saturations, and there's like a really active thingy going on left and right, a bit hectic, just adding to the whole, you know, action atmosphere. Well, I guess I should have commented it on way back then when we were listening to it, but, you know, this is uh, just an improv commentary, so you have to forgive me about that. So moisture deficit. That's that's until here. That was the part that I sent to Hopu. That was the demo that I sent to Hopu and say, well, what about this? You know, just uh, testing the waters. And it turned out the water was just the right temperature. So I dived in. But the thing is, I wasn't really happy with how the track was in relation to ship to the rest of the soundtrack. I felt it was like a really separate piece. So beside this. I can't help myself solo part. Uh, another um, motive that felt also that was um, I wanted to tie in another track also with the soundtrack. So I laid this xylophone. If you have heard of the soundtrack before, you might recognize that this is the main theme of Surface Tension, which was another track that I felt 
okay, it's it's a little bit out of place with the entire thing. So I thought, okay, let's bring them together. Moisture Deficit has the main themes of the soundtrack in its in its core melody, but you know, let's tie these two together and make it all one thing. And so that's what I did. Hopefully it worked, I don't know. When listening to it now, I feel that it is part of the thing. I don't feel it's out of place anymore. It's also because I've added some uh, pads that can be heard in other parts of the soundtrack too. Like this breathy thing that you listen to now. In the game, the track ends up uh, quicker than this. It doesn't have this long fade out with this uh, reverb added to it. What I wanted to do is, when, when I was uh, creating the, the album, the actual album, I spent a lot of time figuring out, you know, what comes after what, basically, the, the order of the tracks. At this point, Moisture Deficit was really the midpoint so I just um, created this long tail with uh, this reverb that creates the sense of that the, the music is just leaving, you know, it's just leave, taking a break. Let's take a break, basically, that's what it says. And then, as if to say, we're back, we have a fast bass song, Tropic of Cancer. If you listen to the riff, it's basically the main theme. And the melody is the reversal of the main theme. Again, I'm using, I'm just using this stuff over and over, you know. I'm trying to basically experiment, even my, my background, my filler stuff, you know, the ambience behind the main theme, it is also the main theme. And this melody here, is actually what we've just heard before in Moisture Deficit. Just in a slightly different harmonic setting. So if you listen to this pad in the background that is doing this... This chopper effect is another plugin that I'm using that is basically just does that. It takes the incoming sound and automates the volume basically. It brings the volume up and down based on the settings that you want and just cuts it. And uh, that little beep that we heard before that's uh, from Plog Chip Sounds. I mentioned Omnisphere before, I'm, that I'm using really heavily on the entire soundtrack, but also Plog Chip Sounds is a, is a library from Plog that basically what they did is sample old chips from, you know, Game Boys, Super NES, uh, whatever you can imagine, you know, Mega Drive, stuff like that, Spectrums, and they've sampled uh, a lot of the sounds the, 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 from the generators, also some preset sounds like coin drops or whatever jumps uh, and some of the drums that they had. And basically whenever I wanted to have this chiptune color over, over the music, I just uh, used Plug. It's a really nice and really deep plugin if you want to go into it, you can really create quite authentic stuff with it. I know that, you know, maybe some purists out there will say if you want to do chip tunes, open up a tracker and do it properly, okay? I'm totally for that, but there are other ways. If I can have it in an environment that gives me the opportunity to use it in other ways than what they were originally used, why not?
was uh, Tropic of Cancer. And we're moving into Aurora Borealis. This is the only track that the title was there before the music. I thought, okay, I'm doing all these tracks about weather phenomena, rain, atmospheric phenomena. I really want to have something that is called Aurora Borealis. If you guys don't know what it is, I, uh, by the way, you, you should uh, Google it and check out some pictures. So I thought, okay, I need, I need a really atmospheric track even more ambient than Risk of Rain, the first one. And I wasn't really sure if we are going to be able to use it in the game because of its atmosphere and stuff, but still I thought, okay, I wanna do it. Even if it gets rejected, I'm just gonna put it in the soundtrack. And this is what I came up with. This little snare is on 6 8. And now we go into 6 8, but this has been prepared basically from the snare and the cymbal that's been playing before. But it's not really noticeable because the harmony that changes is sort of uh, freely. It's on 4 4, but not really. I was, I basically what I did is just you know sit on my keyboard and started playing a harmonic progression that I came up with, not really timed to the metronome. So, yeah, at some point I thought I can't have just, you know, one, one ambience, one moving ambience. I want to go into something more rhythmic. So I introduced this six eighth pattern on the snare, just, just barely noticeable, and that leads us into this part, you know, this And the harmony of this part, again, can be traced back to the original music, the, the Risk of Rain song. And I've created this um, bell-like sound using a, an arpeggiator and an electric piano. made an arpeggiator, you know, that runs uh, up and down on several octaves, create this really atmospheric thing. And just a touch of chip tunes again, you know. And here is surface tension. I'm just, uh, I've hinted about this uh, just a little bit uh, at forums and stuff. This is my least favorite track from the entire soundtrack. And if I had the time, I would probably not even edit things, I would probably just do it from scratch. It's not like I hate the track, but it's the one that I would mostly want to revisit and make changes to. I wanted to have a, uh, you know, a beat track. It has a little bit of the 90s sound. There's just one thing that I like on this track 
no, no, that's not true. There are a lot of things I like, but there's one thing that is particularly tricky, and that is that track, although it is, uh, you know, kind of beat track, is um, it's also in five. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, etc. But behind that, there is a seven tuplet playing on a xylophone. So it's a seven over five, which is a quite tricky uh, thing to, to count. Of course, it's not that hard to program into a computer, but you know, still. You can hear it now. This thingy. And of course, the wobble, because, you know, back then when I was writing that, that was all the rage. Nobody asked me to do it, I just wanted to have it. It's, it's not really dubstep wobble, but it is a wobble, and I'm guilty of using it. And there's that xylophone I was talking about before on moisture deficits that, you know, it's like the, the connecting link between the two. Another thing about this track is was that it was really a bitch to produce because there are just too many layers of things going on. So I really couldn't come up with a proper production sound for it. And I'm not 100% happy with how it ended up sounding. But you know, at some point you just have to say, okay, this is locked and we're moving on because there are more important things to do. There's much more music to be done. So yeah, now you know, surface tension. Oh boy, and now we have Arctic Oscillation. I wonder if I can manage to really talk about this track because it is the longest track in this album. And I really, really need to talk slowly over it to feel the time. The idea about this track was that I wanted to have a really minimalistic track. I mean, the soundtrack is pretty minimal in general, but this is really a study in minimalism. So I have this sort of chord pr progression and melody on top of it that is just being repeated over and over. And the only thing that happens is that I'm adding layers to it. But the, the, what's interesting about the progression is that it's not a progression that takes you from A back to A, so that you can actually repeat it uh, in the same exact manner, but it takes you from A to a transposed A and this A takes you to another transposed A and the, the third transposition takes you back to the original A. So we have this sort of um, endlessly rising uh, idea via transposition after transposition after transposition and then back to the top, you know. Also, because it was so minimalistic in its musical material, I thought, why don't I use polyrhythm? So we have this really weird thing going on where the melody of the, of the song is in another beat, the chord progression is in another beat, the electric bass and the, and the drums, the rhythm section basically, is in another beat. And they just meet once in a while.
but they don't meet at the same time that the um, chord progression does its uh, whole uh, loop. I don't know, that, did that sound really confusing? I don't know. I'm not gonna re-record it because it's going to be equally confusing. You just have to take my word on it, you know? Sorry about that. Yeah, basically all those uh, polyrhythms, they were calculated, reverse engineered basically, to meet at a specific point. There's a little bit of tweaking going on. I'm not 100% fair in my use of them. I do add the odd eighth note to my bars to have them meet where I want them to, to meet, but the, the idea was that I want them to have this kind of um, cathartic moment where everything comes together and the beat starts to following the song and the melody properly. So I'm just gonna let this play just for a little while. can hear it's just really over and over the same thing, just the harmony transposes. And the bit crushing here. Leading us to this Weird part, I thought, I really wanted to have like a really long track. So I thought, okay, we've heard this enough. So what should we do now? And I thought, why don't I have an actual storm, like a rainstorm in one of the tracks? So I, I did, I found Two samples, one of rain and one of a thunderstorm with, you know, some uh, thunder. What I did is just before it starts, I'm bit crushing the entire song and bringing it into an almost mono sound. So I'm really narrowing down the stereo field, putting the song in the background and having my rain and thunderstorm you know, take over. And that that was that. It's maybe it's a it's a gimmick, I don't know, but I liked it and I thought it, it would work. Hopefully it does. And here's the outro of the song. And the interesting thing about it is that it's the only place in the whole track that we have new material coming up and it's just used for this little coda at the end. You know, this little new chord progression that is just used there and never again. And that was Arctic Oscillation. And here we go to Precipitation. It's also a track where I again use the now tested vocoder on drums thing. So you can hear this boom, boom, boom. Perfect sing with the kick drum because it's the kick drum that is generating the sound. And we have this wah-wah guitar I'm driving my guitars through Native Instruments Guitar Rig. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a software guitar amp simulation. Uh, so it has uh, various modules from, you know, 
the preamp, the cabin, where your microphone is put, and uh, a number of uh, simulation of stomp boxes or effects, delays like wah wah distortion, uh, no, anything basically that would be part of a guitarist's uh, rig. And uh, so I'm not using any real amps at any point. And you can hear a hint of the surface tension theme. Boom, 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 boom. Again here. And this abuse really of the chopper effect. This uh, song, it's a bit like the last part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the movie, in the sense that it's not really sure where it is ending. Here's another solo, again, not a guitar solo, but Actually, this one is dubbed with a guitar solo in unison, an octave below. Just to, you know, make this uh, fatter sound, because the lead synth that I was using, the sine wave, didn't have enough, uh, you know, low end to push the song, basically. What I wanted to have, it, to have here is like a real push with this solo. And this melody is just a little bit of a hint to that theremin part in Monsoon. And this is the ending that I was talking about, that it's not really an ending. I really like the, the heavy heavy metal sound that uh, came up with from songs like uh, Precipitation and uh, Tropic of Cancer, Hailstorm, of course. Hailstorm was the beginning of the metal sound, basically. And, of course, it, it all led us, basically, to this one. Double fucking rainbow. It's definitely the heaviest of the lot. It's uh, written on a 7 time signature, 7-8. Well, not all of it, the first part. I really love it. It's uh, on, a t on my top three, I guess. Uh, the other two would be Dewpoint and Chanson de Tomne. really blasting this black metal sound, completely Scandinavia influenced, just bring the darkness. Um, as in many of the, almost all of the tracks in the soundtrack, I'm using a lot of drum kits. There were uh, five drum kits constantly armed and ready in my sessions. This one is using two of them, is using the acoustic drum kit for the really heavy metal parts and this more electronic drum kit for these, you know, ambient parts, which is a Battery 4 drum kit. Battery 4 is a drum machine from Native Instruments has some really interesting electronic stuff. This acoustic one is from the Battery 3 library.
the fun thing about this kit, this acoustic kit, is that it's called a pop kit. And here's the prog part. Um, I, I'm really painstakingly taking care of my drum programming because I used to be a drummer, so you will never hear, especially when acoustic drumming it takes place, you will never hear something that you know requires you know three feet and uh, four arms to be played. I really take good care that my drum parts are playable by an actual human being. What I was saying about the pop kit is that it it's it for me it's it's the heaviest. It's probably because it's a bit more processed, a bit more compressed, and it has the more pushy sound. Although it's called the pop kit, I'm using it on heavy metal stuff, and it works fine for me. I really like the sound. Of course, this is not, this is by far the out of the box sound. There's a lot of processing going on, but still. Listen to this blast beat, for example. And now I'm gonna bit crush the entire song. I really like this ending for a Double Fucking Rainbow. It's just, uh, I think it's, it's nice to have a real nod to the good old times. Going into Coalescence, uh, this track was really loved after the release of the soundtrack. A lot of people commenting on YouTube, you know, how they like it. It really had to do with where the song is placed. It's in the last level of the game. And although I would really love to take credit for that, I cannot because I was writing the songs and throwing it at Hopu and they dealt with all the placement in the game. They decided, you know, which level gets which song and stuff like that. So, you know, if you love where you hear a song, that's not me. You should uh, write an email to, to Hopu and thank them for that. So, co-lessons. It's another study in minimalism, I guess you could say. Very few material used throughout the song. It's a very A-B construction, not in the sense, in the traditional song sense of uh, verse chorus. It's just like a, a solid A part and a solid B part. They both use the same material, but they have different harmonic progressions. This bell-like sound in the background, this melody, it's the same melody that comes in the A part of Dew Point. It's really hard to tell, it's quite, the, de the setting is completely different, but still, that's where it is from. Again, using the, a touch of vocoder on the drums to produce these uh, organ-like kits and just uh, building layers. More vocoding, the familiar uh, distorted bass uh, created by the kick drum. Here we go to the B part with this sort of bridge that is basically not a copy, but the, it's the, the exact same idea that you can hear on, uh, on the first track, on Risk of Rain. You know, this ambience. And the main theme again.
think if I had the time, I might go back to Colossens and uh, do just a little bit of editing in the part that comes after this, you know, really somber, uh, slow thingy. If you're careful, you will hear that there's a little bit of a distortion going on, like a digital distortion. That is not a mistake or it's not by accident. There's like an actual effect that I wanted to have. And then here comes a part that I might edit just a little bit. I might, uh, in this one, I might hold back a little bit so I can have an even stronger impact the second time around. But it's... I'm not. Sh I'm not even sure. It's it's a detail, you know. Uh, composition never ends. You just have to say at some point. Okay, this is it. I'm not tweaking anymore. Again, this is not a guitar. It's a, It's my trusty lid. This part ended up having this really, you know, uplifting feeling. It was a blast playing those solos, which are again, once again, based on the main theme of the entire soundtrack. I have said that so many times, it's so boring, I guess, but you know, this is what it is. I'm obsessed with this sort of uh, thematic unity. And here, passing the, the entire song almost through the vocoder, just destroying the sound. And then bit crushing what's left into this non-ending. Here is Chanson d'Automne, pardon my French. This one is really a, a, a really esoteric track. When I wrote this, I thought, okay, this, there is no way this will end up in the soundtrack in the game. And yet it did, and a lot of people like it a lot, and I'm really happy about it. This little synth outbreak was heavily inspired by music of uh, Amon Tobin. the main thing for you know, the last time. I really love that I had the chance to use two woodwinds for this one. It's the only time that I'm using, you know, acoustic instruments in this uh, soundtrack. It's a clarinet and a nobo that comes later on. They're sampled, of course, but I'm using them, you know, in the proper way as a, as a clarinetist would, would play it or as an oboist would play it. It was an experiment that really came together. Uh, I really love both of them. Here comes the oboe. The little chip tuny stuff is a construction that I made. I put the main theme on four different instruments. The first time you hear it, you know, played by each one separately, and then each note is intertwined. So, you know, the actual theme is divided into these instruments. So each one gets one note in different order every time. And here for the outro of the final song of the album, again the same thing that I did on uh, 
moisture deficit, this sort of uh, fading out, adding the reverb to create the sense of going away or maybe you're walking out from the, the room that it's being played. Okay guys, I think that's all. We've reached the end. I want to thank everybody that has listened up to this point. I guess you must be a very crazy person to be listening for so long. But thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy the music. Love, Chris.